So we are following new developments in what has been a long and tense relationship between President Donald Trump and the U.S. intelligence community. The Wall Street Journal reports that spy agencies are withholding sensitive information from the White House because of their, quote, deep mistrust of Mr. Trump and his administration. But the director of national intelligence has denied this in a statement saying that any suggestion that the U.S. intel community is hiding information is not true. Let's bring in Chief Washington Correspondent for Yahoo News, Oliver Knox. He joins us from Washington. Olivier, um, this Wall Street Journal report comes as the New York Times is reporting that the president is planning a broad review of American intel agencies. What do you make of these developments? Well, you know, throughout the campaign, Donald Trump waged kind of a, a, a low-grade war on the intelligence community. Um, and then during the transition and early on in his term, we had comparisons to the Nazis. He did a weird sort of campaign-style rally in front of the CIA's memorial wall, which went down very badly with a lot of the career professionals over at CIA. Um, there's a lot of tension here, and there's tension not just between this White House and intelligence agencies, but also law enforcement. And a lot of the leaks that we're talking about, we've been talking about this week, are actually from the law enforcement side at least as much as they are from the intelligence side. So the president is trying to keep the focus uh, on that, trying to keep the spotlight on these leaks. And uh, in fact, he tweeted this morning, uh, he's pretty happy with the, with the article, uh, the spotlight has finally been put on the low-life leakers. They will be caught. I want to ask you, I mean, it is a legitimate concern, the level of leaks coming out of the intelligence community and other places. Um, what do you make of this? Do you see maybe some invest some serious investigations into the leaks? Well, there might be some serious investigations into the leaks. That's, that's entirely possible. Um, you know, certainly some, some folks on Capitol Hill, particularly Republicans, who've shown very little interest in investigating the substance behind the leaks are talking now about how outrageous the leaks are. Uh, the White House can't seem to make up its mind quite whether these are outrageous criminal acts or whether they're fiction. One of the things that Donald Trump tweeted uh, recently was uh, he put sources in quotes, uh, sort of su suggesting that maybe these stories might be made up. Um, there's a, there's, they've been making the point that leaks have always been a problem, which is at least a little bit interesting, given the fact that during the 2016 campaign, uh, President Trump invited people to hack Hillary's email, and, and they benefited immensely from the hacks of the Democratic National Committee. Yeah, Olivia, not only did the president uh, invite the Russians uh, to hack Hillary Clinton's email, although he later said that, there, you know, his people said he was joking, um, on the campaign trail he would say, I love WikiLeaks. And, um, you, you know, I, I wonder, I mean, yesterday the president seemed to blame the leaks and the media for ousting uh, the former national security advisor, Michael Flynn. Let me play what the president said yesterday, and uh, let's get you to weigh in on the other side. I think it's very, very unfair what's happened to General Flynn, the way he was treated, and the documents and papers that were illegally — I stress that — illegally leaked. Very, very unfair. As far All right. So <laughs> he's blaming the media. He's blaming the leakers. But then Sean Spicer says, well, it was an erosion of trust. Um, it, it, I mean, we can't — it's hard for the American people to get what is a, an answer, a response from the Trump administration that everybody uh, on his team agrees to. Uh, so what, do you, what is your take on that? Well, just to be clear, without the leaks, uh, there's no evidence that this White House would have looked into, seriously looked into uh, um, retired General Flynn's contacts with the Russian ambassador. There's no evidence that they would have uh, found this discrepancy. There's no evidence that they would have told Vice President Pence that he went out and misled the American people on Michael Flynn's say-so. So, so in, in some ways, in some ways, the president's absolutely right. The, the, the problem, though, and this is actually, if I could just direct your attention to one thing that Sean Spicer has said now several times, that it was, it was not just this erosion of trust, but what he described as a series of other questionable instances. Kind of a mystery allegation that the White House right now is refusing to substantiate, although it's, it's, very, it's very curious. Yeah, it certainly makes you wonder what else will be uncovered as yeah. uh, investigations continue, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately, Olivia, I, one of the questions I think that a lot of people are going to have is these leaks. And as you point out, the president has said that they are illegal. And in some instances, they may be illegal. Mm -hmm. But what is the line? And this is, I, I want to get your take on this. What is the line between leaker and whistleblower? 
Well, it, it, de it depends. I think if you're the administration on whom the whistle is being blown, then, you, then the person's a leaker. And uh, if you're outside the administration, uh, then obviously they're, they're whistleblowers. You know, this would not be a terrible time to have a serious national conversation about the massive expansion of executive power and the aftermath of the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks. I just don't feel like our political system is up to it. Olivia Knox of uh, Yahoo News, we definitely appreciate your time. Thanks.